We, we had some great times in America. Mm. I mean, to tell you American stories, I mean, they, they, if, you know, they got arrested in America for tax, right? Mm. It was the sold out gig in Hammond, Hammond Indiana. We, the gig was over. Um, I was backstage, probably the worst for wear. And all these guys in suits started walking around us. <clears throat> and they looked pretty, you know, they didn't mean very much. I mean, they were little guys, you know, there's nothing very particular about it. I thought, well, just part of the venue. And I walked out and there's this guy. I said, what are you, what, what's going on? And he sort of pulls his shield out from his jacket and goes, IRS. And I saw him, oh, why? What's going on? We're seizing all your equipment. Why? Because you owe us $18,000. <laughs> I went, no, we don't. What are you talking about? First time I'm getting angry and angry and angry. And then I go back into the dressing room and they're going through all their personal belongings, looking for all this stuff there. And there must be about 25 of them, 30 of them. Maybe not as many, maybe only about 15 of them. I'm probably exaggerating, who knows? But it seemed like lots of them. But lots of police. The police were everywhere. And I was letting off to the guy that was in charge. And the copper, big tall copper, comes over and grabs me the arm and says, if I wish you got cool down, come here. And he walked me to the window of the dressing room. And all around the wall, this venue that was sat on the green in Hammond, Indiana, was surrounded by police cars, all with their lights pointing at the building. <laughs> and they were serious. And they stuck stickers on the equipment. It says, do not touch. This is now the property of the United States government of the USA. <laughs> and uh, I was watching the roadies peeling them off and rolling them up and taking them away. Not thinking they were coming. Souvenirs, I thought they'd just take souvenirs. Anyway, it all ended in a fray that night and they kept the equipment at the venue. And uh, they gave me until Monday morning, this was a Friday night, they gave me to Monday morning to raise the 18,000. Our next gig was Monday evening, as it happens. It was an unusual night for a gig, but it was. And we had to leave and drive to the next gig. And uh, over the weekend, Richard Ogden made really good press of it. We were in the mirror, we were in all the tabloids, the mail picked up on it. And we were all locked in the, the hotel under house arrest. They had a car parked outside watching so that we wouldn't remove any of our vehicles. <laughs> and of course, we just partied for the weekend. It was just one great laugh for the weekend. And just everybody went crazy and bought more and more drugs and found more and more women to bring back to the hotel. <laughs> um, I, of course, didn't because I was in my room trying to find $18,000 to get the equipment back. And uh, the Monday morning came and the band and the crew had all been down to the local print shop and got these t-shirts printed. So please do not touch us and now they're probably the United States of the And um, the band were taking photographs of them and all these IRS guys with their clipboards hiding their faces. You can't take photographs of us. And just chaos outside waiting for the uh, venue to come and open up so we could go and use their office to do the business and get our equipment back. Eventually the venue came, they were an hour late, which is good because it really riled these guys because Hawking just stoned out their heads sitting around laughing, you know. And um, got into the office and the guy sat down and sort of said, well, you've got it. And I said, yeah, put down a draft, I think. I had to draw from 10,000 and 8,000 in cash and put that on the table. And um, he said, fine. And there's writing a receipt and he said, oh, there's another $450. I said, what for? He said, the rental of the venue to store your equipment in. <laughs> <laughs> I just let go. I called him everything you can think under the sun. And then these two guys that were either side of me came across and sort of pulled their jackets open and pointed their guns and said, cool down, cool down. And trying to sort of, I'm raggy haired and bearded and God knows what else. And uh, 
just as they're sort of get about to sort of like uh, take me to task, the door falls in, Andy Dunkey falls onto the floor and goes, it's all right, Doug, I got 450, don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> and off we trotted with our equipment. But a lot of bad vibes for the rest of that. And I'd, uh, we never got the money back.